Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, this is The Ramble. We go until midnight tonight from New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown, and he's not living in a tent in San Francisco yet. Not yet. N- not yet. Hopefully you won't have to. Hopefully the career will keep zooming upward. By the way... No, the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that the... Uh, if you want to live in a tent on the street here, apparently you can because some judge said, federal judge ruled that if uh, San Francisco doesn't provide shelter for these people, they they can live on the street. Oh, okay. Well, does San Francisco provide shelter? No. No. Okay. Well, to some they do, but uh, they they put them in hotels for a while, and that uh, didn't work out. What, what what's wrong with hotels? Well, the uh, the hotels wound up. I think they got about five million dollars worth of damage because. Oh, because I'm I'm just thinking. That, that was there some kind of you know uh, poor person who said you know this is a nice hotel, but it doesn't beat a tent. Yeah, well, apparently because a lot of these people are mentally ill. With a tent, we have pride of home ownership. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but anyway, we talked last week about all the the downturn of San Francisco and it's my hometown it's where I was born I was born there but there's and no tents in New York there there oh I hear there are but I haven't seen them you know yeah. I mean I don't know what part of town I mean every let's face it New York is the kind of town where you got a great neighborhood here and then you turn the block and it's a bad neighborhood you know so where are they going to put up the tents also I don't know that this, right now, I mean, it's getting warm, but during the winter, you don't want to live here on the streets, you know? But we've had problems with our with our poor, uh, especially during uh, COVID. The problem was is that they they decided that they wanted to clean the sub, close the subways at 1 in the morning and keep them closed till 5, and from 1 to 5, they were going to do all the cleaning. So what they had to do was push out all the homeless people. And so they pushed all the homeless people out. And uh, they, so where do they wind up? On the street. We have this big kind of like, whenever they fix an apartment building, whenever they do what they call parking, which is put new cement between the bricks on a building, they have to put up these sheds that go around the building. So if anything falls, it's not going to hit somebody, okay? So they have to have these sheds. Well, what happens, you put up these sheds, and all of a sudden I call them homeless shelters because what happens is all the homeless people decide to sleep under them. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, that's, 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 not, uh, that's not fun. Uh, and, and so I've got, we've got all these homeless people uh, that uh, hang out under our building. And uh, uh, I'm just hoping very soon we should be through with that. And when they do it, I don't think we'll have homeless people there any longer. But, uh, you know. Well, I remember 1975, New York was broke, and uh, they, uh, the, they asked the feds for money, and Gerald Ford said no. Do you remember this? Y- yeah, some but, uh, big headline uh, said, Ford to New York, go to hell. No, <laughs> drop dead. Drop dead. That was the headline. Uh, yeah, I mean, and somehow whenever we ask for money, we don't get it. You know, I told you about uh, about the the uh, the migrants they're shipping up here from Texas and Florida on buses. The buses come in every day, filled, literally filled with immigrants. Which, okay, I'm you know I'm all for the immigrant population. I believe that this is America, and we say 
this is could be the you know this is your home this land of the free home of the brave whatever you got give us your tired your poor your huddled masses yearning to live uh, free or breathe free free um all of that i believe in that I, I believe this should be that kind of refuge for people who want to find a better life but then they you know they get here and they kidnap them literally they tell put them on a bus and say you know we're taking you to amarillo or something and next thing they know they're getting off the bus in new york city uh and the and the mayor's there to greet them <laughs> what a <laughs> stupid mayor anyway but every and, time I see your mayor, the only thing he says is, "I'm on a plant-based diet." That's all I hear him say. You well, know, yeah, he's eating his own. Uh, anyway, so what happened is, is that uh, they they get off these buses by the thousands, and of course they're then our problem. And we're not about ready to tell them, "Well, screw you! You're going to starve to death. We got to do something with them." Because New York is a liberal city, and we do care about human beings, and so uh, we got to do something about it. So we do something about it. What do we do about it? Well, we uh, we put them up in hotels that will take them. Uh, we do all this stuff, and the cost of all of this so far has been four billion dollars. Right? That's four billion dollars out of my pocket. Well. With the taxes I pay the city, that's 13 cents out of my pocket. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, $4 billion. And that's $4 billion we don't have, okay? This may be a fairly wealthy city, and it is if it doesn't have things like a bunch of people coming into it every day, you know, and that we've got to take care of. So we spent $4 billion. The mayor asked Biden, give us some money to take care of this. We haven't seen a penny yet, so far as I know. You know, I mean, this has been a terrible thing for us. Uh, and But we don't want these people living on the street, you know. So, no, but I think maybe they should, the border should not be wide open. I don't know why millions of people are well, coming you know, in. He, you, like you, know, you know what's happened? This is, uh, this is amazing, amazing little fact, okay? And then you tell me what you think was the reason. Uh, they had this Title 42 in which uh, they were limiting the people that could come in because of uh, Title 42, which was because of COVID. They didn't want a lot of people coming in who might have COVID. And we all know that people south of the border are diseased and uh, 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 undoubtedly had COVID more than we did. I'm being <laughs> facetious, folks. Um, so Title 42... They were coming across at 11,000 a day, all right? When Title 42 ended a few days ago, we're recording this a few days after it ended, all of a sudden it dropped to like three, 4,000, and they think it's gonna drop even more. Now, they dropped restrictions, and the amount of people trying to get in went down. Go figure, right? That's weird. So who do we blame for this crush at the border? Certainly not Biden. He didn't create Title 42. But who did? Donald Trump. So really, Trump was the reason we had all these migrants flooding the border. Because they wanted to get in because they were, it looked like they were closing them down. You know, it's kind of like when you say, by the way, uh, don't come here. Because things blah, 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 and then all of a sudden people rush there because they're not supposed to rush there. There was something to that that was causing more people to want to come across the border. But right now, by the numbers we have, we're getting down to the normal numbers we always had. You know, so. Well, that would be good because yeah. uh, uh, there'd yeah. been a, I forget how, I thought they said three or four million people have come in and past couple of years well you know what are we going to do with these people these are people you know to begin with these are not like criminals looking for a soft touch these are people who came from countries where they've been oppressed they've been brutalized by gangs you know and so on and they want to come to the united states for Probably because of all the work we've done overthrowing governments in central america <laughs> the, yeah exactly exactly we've given them a better life down there by overthrowing the uh, 
the uh, communists so the dictators could take over. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they, they come up here and they're looking for a better life. And they're going, they're, they're, many of them are walking all the way. Or they're hopping on a, what they call a death train, in which people die all the time because they fall off of them. Uh, and they, they, you know, they're going through very extreme circumstances to get here. Well, you got to admire that. You can't be, you know, it's not like they had it easy getting here. And they came here for a better life. Uh, and who, who are we not to allow them that dream? You know, that's the dream of America. That's the dream all Americans have had. Am I right or am I wrong? You're right, but I think you have to have, you can't have the entire world uh, march in. You have to have some, I think, number controls on well, how many people can come in per year. You know, this limitation of immigrants is not new. It's existed throughout the history of the United States. And you know when we did it during World War II, who, who couldn't get in here? Jews. Jews weren't, right. weren't allowed to come in, much like the uh, South Americans are not being allowed to come in now. It's always been a different group, but it's always been a different xenophobia that we had against those groups. And so, you know, when I look back at the history of the United States, hey, if I was a Jew trying to get into this country to get away from Nazism, uh, I would be turned away at the border. You know, I, I had a friend who was Jewish who was, in, you know, he got away from Germany, and they got on a boat, and they had to go to Cuba. And then when they got to Cuba, because they had some money, they had to pay the Cuban government enough money to make them a Cuban citizen so they could then get on a boat and go into the United States. Well, that's the way Jews got away from Nazi Germany. In the beginning, you know, Hitler said, I will give as many Jews as any country wants to take. And I think there were a few that took them, but the only one that took a million Jews was Francisco Franco in Spain, and they could never figure out why. Really? Yeah, yeah. He took a million Jews in. He told them, he said, "Look, you're allowed to come in here because I want you to because you, you want to get away from the concentration camps in Germany. But once you get here, I want you to do everything you can to leave here and go somewhere else." because we can't take that many people coming into the country. And he was he was very positive about the Jews. And That's nobody interesting. And so he was I wonder what his relationship with Hitler was since they're both fascists. They, they had a good he had a good relationship with Hitler. That's why he was able to get a million Jews. Because Hitler said, Look, I I don't want to have to gas these people. That's too much trouble. I if you just take <laughs> if, if some country will take them, we'll give them to you. And the United States wouldn't take him, you know. That was FDR. England wouldn't take him, you know. So FDR made some bad decisions. Oh yeah, but I mean, uh, when it came to Jews, we could have saved a lot of Jewish lives if we had just yeah. Not that's am I never knew that about Frank. That's amazing. Yeah. In fact, that's what happened with my friend. He went to Spain, and then he went from Spain to Cuba. That was usually the route a lot of people took. Um. And because we had a good relationship with Cuba at the time, they would, we would not deny anybody who was a citizen of Cuba, even if he was a citizen from yesterday, you know. So, I mean, we've always had these policies, you know, and it's mm -hmm. always been based on a certain xenophobia of a particular race. You know who it was out on the West Coast for years? Chinese. Oh, yeah. Chinese. Terrible treatment. They, they, they only allowed them to immigrate here because they would work the railroads. Work on the railroads. and Yeah. Yeah, but I'm just uh, I just don't like people, so I just not it's not xenophobia with me. I just think the less people, the better. <laughs> well, I, I I had a, my friend uh, uh, Jack Garfine who had been in eleven concentration camps. Um, so uh, you know he graduated. Uh, no, he was in eleven concentration <laughs> camps, and he said that the human race is pretty terrible. Yeah, he said the human race is horrible. 
but individuals were, are okay. They're great. They're wonderful individuals. And he talked about one case where uh, he was in. I think it was in. Uh, he was in. Um, uh, what was the big uh, Auschwitz? Auschwitz. Uh, he was in Auschwitz, and they were doing this kind of like death march thing, where you had to you had to keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. If you stumbled and fell, they just pulled out a gun and shot you. Okay. So he was kind of, he remembers that he was pretty tired and it was pretty gru gru grueling. And he almost started falling and a guard, a Nazi guard, picked him up, picked his arm, and picked him up by his arm and said, hold on to me. And he wow. walked him the rest of the way. He said, that, really? man, that man saved my life. He said, Jesus. it was a Nazi guard at Auschwitz and he said that guy saved my life he said so individuals are capable of wonderful things he says but the human race as a group is terrible that's what George Carlin said he said individually most people are fine you get them in a group they're dangerous Th that's probably true that is probably true but you know I've never had a great deal of uh, love for this country when it comes to their protestations of certain things and I always bring up the fact that they didn't take any Jews into this country. Oh, maybe if we had a lot of money, they would. You know, but just the average Jew. If I lived in Germany, I'd be—I would have been dead already. You know. I—I—it's—it's it's amazing, and it's amazing that we—we we don't know how to solve this problem. It's not like it's the biggest problem in the world. You know. But if we had a little heart and a little compassion, we could probably solve the problem in no time. But we don't. That, that's my argument about it. I, I see where well, you're coming from, too, you know. Yeah. I mean, you well, know. Everything with humans generally uh, <laughs> it evolves me, into no, a fight I, and then a war. Believe <laughs> me, I, I completely understand. It's hard enough being a comic without having some South Americans competing with you. Yeah, they're taking the job. <laughs> Yeah, but it's uh, you know it's, it's it's really something. I gotta tell you, it's really something. Um, um, we live in a weird, weird country right now. It's not the country I signed up for. You know, remember when you were a kid, what they told you this country was all about? No, oh, yeah, and that's uh... land of the free, home of the brave. Uh, you know, and I believe that uh, yeah, our borders were open because. Uh, you know, we we believe that people have the right to. This is this is this is a country of immigrants. That's all it is. You know, almost everybody who lives here can trace his lineage back to the old country. You know, so uh, uh, the idea that we are going to stop immigrants from coming in, I think we just have to figure out a method to do it. Do you know how long it takes? You know, they have they, these people who come in, they, they seek asylum, so then they get asylum, and they're supposed to show up for court in order to, you know, plea their, uh, their desire for, for asylum. Do you know how long it takes before you get to a court? I think it's years. Five years. Yeah. By that time, you've created a family, gotten a good job, you know, become a productive citizen of this country, been paying it taxes, and now you've got to go fight for your life uh, five years later? I mean, it's amazing. It's just amazing. We, get, we have to change the system. That's all. And the system was created by Congress, so let them solve it, you know? So. Yeah, it's not working, whatever we've got, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, but anyway, so uh, how, how are things going in comedy, my friend? I always ask you that. Things are uh, going okay. Let's see, I'm doing okay. I'm going to work with uh, Bobby Slate in June. He's, he's doing it. June 10th, I'm with Dana Carvey. Then uh, Bobby Slayton's coming up here out of retirement on June 13th to the Mill Valley. He's he's doing he's doing the what the little place in Mill Valley what is that the Throckmorton Theater yeah yeah why why is he doing that I thought he wasn't doing comedy anymore oh boy well, Lucy the woman who owns the theater likes Bobby so much she just said please come up so he said I'm okay he agreed to come out of retirement to do a set so good and he he loved Mill Valley too so he wants to stay I, up ta here for I a talked to him days. a couple of weeks ago you know 
And he seems, the best. he seems pretty happy not working, you know. That's what he told me, but man, I think he's such a great comic. I hate to see him well, not it, working. It's you know? kind of like Yasha Heifetz, who most people don't even know what I'm talking about. was a great violinist. It'd be like if Yasha, Yasha Heifetz said, I don't think I'm going to play again, you know. I mean, when you're the best that there is, you keep doing it. And yeah. it's a shame when you don't. Uh, and and comedy is his instrument, and he plays it miraculously well. I mean, I don't know of a comic who doesn't think he's the best. Chris you know? Rock said he's the best club comic in America. Yep, yep. And there's no question about it. But, uh, you know, he, he just says the, the, the business has passed him by. He's too old. You know, they like young comics. Do you find that your well, problem? You know. that, oh, that's a, I think that's always been true, but I think you can find, as you age, you can find your own audience. You play old people that are a bit older than the, what go to the clubs, but uh, they're out there. Well, but you're opening for people. Uh, you're, you're a great opening act. I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're the act. If I were a, a comic who was the headliner, you're the guy I'd want to have come before me because you oh. set up the room. Yeah. You know, you don't want somebody to go up there who destroys the room, who turns the room. And I don't know if people know what we're talking about. Explain turning the room to an audience who doesn't know what that means. Uh, once, uh, well, once I got, uh, I got an, I was opening for Dana up in Oregon and I got, uh, I actually got an encore and somebody told, oh man, that, he must have loved that. And I said, uh, no, you don't want <laughs> You want to get the room focused, but you don't want to get the room going. So he has to he has to work harder <laughs> to get them focused on him. So you just got to get to set the room up. You well, don't have to kill. You just have to. Uh, I think the reason I, I would want you is for exact that exactly that reason that you don't think you have to top the headliner. No, and but I know a lot of like you said a lot of comics want to go out there and hey I'm going to make it hard for him to follow me. Yeah, follow that motherfucker. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's, you know, I mean, uh, that's what's great about you. And that's why they like you. It's because well, Here's you know, another story. I won't tell you who it was, but uh, Dana had an opener. And you're, when you open for him, he likes to, you to do 12 to 16 minutes. And uh, the guy that was opening for him one night did 38. So. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I bet he was backstage fuming. Oh, it wasn't happy. <laughs> and and the guy was probably not turning the room, not doing that great, but he just probably wouldn't get off. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, that, but that's why you're working. You know, you found your place, and you're happy with it. You know, I'm happy with it, yeah. I mean, you've been a headliner some places, right? And I used to do the B room in the early 90s, yeah, and I never liked it, so. You never liked being a headliner? No, it's too much pressure. I don't, uh, you got to do, a, I don't like doing long sets, I don't. I don't think I ever put you on for on last. No, you put me on second or third, which is I, perfect. I, usually, I, I probably made you many times open. You know, never open. No, never you always open? Had, I, I think my energy level was too low for that. Okay, type so of I either show. I either made you. I usually had five people on the show, and you were usually yeah. I would usually follow Kravitz. You would follow Kravitz. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, the story is, I tell people, is that I, I change, a lot of people when they do, you know, comic, uh, comedy shows, uh, let's say you've got three people, uh, they put the, uh, they put the, what they call the worst person first, and he's usually the MC, and then uh, in, uh, the, in the middle spot, you put the second best comedian, and you put the headliner. Well, my feeling was, and I usually had five comics, is that you take, the second best comic you've got and put them first. Right? And then... Absolutely. You put the worst comic you've got in the middle. I'm not saying that I ever hired bad comics, but you take the one that was the least effective and put him in the middle. But you, you don't... You don't uh, and, and people go, why do you start with the best comic? I mean, I told people, I remember telling our good friend late departed friend Warren Thomas I'm putting you on first and he said but I'm not that bad <laughs> and I said no it's because you're that good right I don't want so I want somebody opening up the show that is just going to say this is going to be a funny show you know 
And that's where I think the clubs made the, to this day. It's a, the opening act is the guy that's yeah. least experienced, and opening a show is not easy. So we open a show, and the guy's not doing that good. The audience starts to think, did I make a mistake coming here? You know? <laughs> exactly. Hey, I just looked. Right. We, we've run out of time. Yeah. We've run out of time, my friend. Talk to you next week. We will. We will. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Bubbles. See you probably next week. Uh, actually, what happened was um, he got COVID. Yeah. He, it, well, actually, I had a bunch of things where I couldn't do a show because I had COVID. And then last week on Friday, I couldn't do a show because I was not feeling well. And uh, so I, I wrote him. I said, you know, we're not going to be able to do our usual thing because I've got too many of your interviews banked, as it were. And he said, well, that's okay because I'm not feeling well. And he talked about it. And uh, as he described it, I said, do you think you might have COVID? And he said, yeah. I said, well, go over to Kaiser, you know, the next time they're open and go see them. And so he went and saw me, had COVID. And he doesn't know where he got it. You know, he, he's like me. He, where, did, where did I get it from? I have no idea where I got it from. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Anyway, let me bring in some of these uh, people here. Hold on a second. Okay, there are only two of them right now. Uh, I'm sure it'll pick up as the hour goes on. Uh, and uh, let's see here. We've got, uh, uh, there's uh, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Great. Yeah. And Josh? Hello. Hello, Josh. Talk to me. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Yeah. <laughs> Hello and hi to everybody on what is an auspicious um, news day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, um, I I don't know where to begin, boy. Uh, but I I think Trump's in a lot of trouble. You know, would you agree with that, Josh? Well, some places you go, and you go in to use the bathroom, which is uncomfortable because you're not at home, and everyone likes to poop at home. Mm -hmm. But some places you go, and you just have to, and you and. Some places have Time Magazine or Newsweek when all that stuff existed or a newspaper or whatever. And apparently at Mar-a-Lago they have, you know, classified documents in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so, Can you imagine somebody going in there to take a dump? I mean, you, I mean, you know, people pass the time by reading. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. what's wrong with studying up on our plan to invade Iran or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. you know, I mean, you, you know, I it, mean it, it, you're an informed person when you leave there. I, that's it, positive. I, I never thought about that. The positives of Mar-a-Lago is that you, you're up on world affairs. Well, I mean, right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, um, so, so in Matt Alan. Gates' bathroom, you would find Boy's Life magazine. Boy's Life. Possible. It's possible. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what kind of stupidity. I thought it was funny, Josh. You know, goes on there, but I mean, <laughs> you know, I was Well, probably... you know what I thought today was <laughs> is Trump the stupidest man in America? I mean, he's the at least the most arrogant, if nothing, you know. I mean, yeah, but I mean, just, it, it, how stupid can you be? You're right. Yeah. You know, the government says, "What? Well, you know, you've got our documents. Turn them over." You go, "Well, come on by and pick them up." You know, and you have your lawyers I mean, there what, handing them what, out to him. What do you want them for? I mean, really? Well, I, mean, I know what he wanted them for. <laughs> you know. he, he wanted them to be able to have something to give to, uh, say, another country, so he could get favors. That's what he wanted with those. I'm sure, yeah. <clears throat> and he's sitting there at the head. Uh, uh, where, what's the name of that uh, country club he's got? You know, out in New Jersey, and he's telling, he's showing yeah. somebody this stuff. You know. Yeah, apparently, I was just reading an article about that. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, the some of the stuff is just. I mean, it's really stupid. I, I just have no idea why you would think that you would need to do that and I mean I, I've seen all these quotes you know in the last little bit that I started looking into this you know of him in 2015 or whatever saying 
you know, one of the number one priorities that the, the country needed to do was to get these, you know, classified information and leaks and all that under control and, you know, the Hillary this, Hillary that, you know. Yeah. I mean, he didn't, he didn't do any of that. I mean, you know, but I, I guess from the tidbits that I read there that, you know, a lot of information in his indictment about know obviously knowing what he was doing and, and about openly asking people to hide these things or to cheat or to not give them back or yeah. whatever i mean you know asked a couple of his lawyers if we could just just tell them they're not here you know i mean what, what i mean what the you know? nothing to see here right i yeah. mean it's just it's just stupidity <clears throat> and you know this guy that worked for him all these years i don't feel sorry for that guy i mean you know well i wonder i wonder if trump's going to pick up his legal fees uh, he won't you know i mean well he better because that guy's going to start squealing like a stuck pig well you know he probably already has or whatever but i mean how's how's that working out for him working for someone like that i mean you should know better and you listen know? if but, you work for him and were a lawyer you wound up in jail yeah. you know and these lawyers he's got now went out of their way to make sure they wrote down everything to make sure that he didn't uh, he didn't get them in a corner where they were going to get in trouble for doing something for him. Yes, I'm sure that all these attorneys had to have agreements with Trump that the attorneys were never going to do anything against him. Well, I mean, uh, but I don't think that you know. Let's say he's done something illegal. And now the government mm -hmm. wants you to testify about him. None of what you would have signed with him is binding in a situation like that. No, it's not. It's it's not. No, because you are you, you you know you can sign anything that somebody wants you to as long as it isn't involved in a crime. You know this stuff is involved in a crime. I mean there. What was it, 35 counts, 37 counts, something uh, like yeah, that? Yeah, that's what I heard, 37. And Marjorie right. was sitting here looking at all of them, yeah. you know, and the, right. the, 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 the uh, uh, toilet, <clears throat> toilet documents is what, what was just wonderful to look at. And then yeah, at, one point, I mean, at one point, they had these pictures, the government took these pictures, yeah. and there was a box that had literally fallen off and all right. the documents were lying yeah. on the floor. And what they had to do with one of these documents that they took a picture of that was lying mm. on the floor, they had to uh, run a black line through it so you wouldn't know what it said. It was yeah. that classified. I, mean, I, I read some information that said, you know, that the the 37 counts is not, uh, does not really include every document. It's not, he had way more documents than that, but they chose not to charge certain counts for so that the government would have the ability not to have to introduce those particular documents into evidence uh, because they were so sensitive. They they don't even want to. So he obviously had some stuff that they said we're just totally gonna not pretend this was ever here because it's it's that sensitive. Well, they, they say that the government has a problem here, and so and so does the defense in that the government doesn't want to uh, mention what the really sensitive documents contained. Right. Yeah. They said they would let the, uh, the jury know. They would have monitors in front of them and they could see them, but that, that they couldn't make them public because yeah. they are, you know, they, they, what are they yelling about? That he was, he was compromising these documents, so why should they do the same thing? But they're afraid that his lawyers are going to do it. And and the judge, they're hoping the judge is going to say, "Hey, you know, it, that's out of bounds. You can't." Yeah, do well, that. I mean, they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll be able to contain them, or they'll be in a lot of trouble. But you know, he's he's getting new lawyers again because they all left today. You yeah, know? I, yeah, or yesterday, whatever. So, yeah, well, I think they, I, I think they see a case they can't win. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, they, I mean, or it, or they're not going to get paid. Or they're not going to get paid. I mean, or they're going to get know. in trouble. You know, they're going to lose their law license and whatever. So they don't want any part of him. He's bad yeah, I news. Don't know, right? Who would want to be attached to him for any reason? You know, he's but. probably going to get some. Kim Kardashian is probably available, I guess, as a lawyer. Well, you know, who he might so, get? Yeah, but I mean, so it's just, it's just, uh, it, it's amazing how pathetic that guy is. And how full of himself he is that yeah. he thinks he can get away with something like this. He's been doing that his he whole might. life. He's been doing this. Somebody just said 
his whole life is just caught up with him. You know? Uh, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. The only thing they're worried about is the judge down there is the judge that uh, put a kibosh on the Mar-a-Lago stuff. And then they, the government had to come along and change yeah. that. They went to court and another court admonished that judge. And she's the judge in the case. But really? I'm, yeah, I'm thinking she's going to yeah. try and be a little more Well, yeah, she's, about she's been in trouble. And, you know, I mean, she does anything over the line, it's it'll get appealed and, you know, it'll get turned around. Well, the only thing the judge has to do in a case like this is, is rule on what can be admitted and not admitted and so on. And if, if it appears that she's being unfair, they can request a new judge, yeah. you know. I mean, they'll they'll work through that, but it's just... Well, somebody said, you know, they could have done it in D.C., but they did it in, in Florida. There were a couple of reasons they say they did it in Florida. Number one, there's no extradition yeah. from Florida that has to happen, okay? <laughs> uh, although extradition in a federal case doesn't... You, you, a state has no jurisdiction over whether or you can or cannot extradite somebody because it's a federal case, it's not a, a, a local case. So like mm -hmm. with the thing in New York, they would have had to had the ability to extradite him, okay? Uh, because that was a local case. But um, uh, they say that the reason that they're doing it in Florida is they don't want anybody to say the fix is in. They want to put him in some place that would normally be friendly towards him. And they think they probably got a strong enough case they can get him convicted anyway, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, that's his home court. I mean, he gets convicted there. You can't cry foul. Uh, I mean, they will, but, I mean, you know, they it, they can't. So, you know, with legitimacy anyway. So, yeah, it's just, I mean, some of the stuff they did, I, I mean, I, I just don't know what, you know, I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, you, uh, you know, it's, it's just like the stupidity of it i mean the arrogance of it i mean it, it's just well nobody did got got him in trouble except him you know right. he's mm -hmm. to blame but what i hate is that uh if you go over to fox they say the biden doj mm -hmm. is you well, know I... is has has charged uh, donald trump well it's not biden's doj it's no president's doj no, no, no the Department of Justice is controlled by the president, or at least it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. It kind of mm -hmm. was under Trump. Uh, but the fact is that DOJ, uh, it, you know, to say that this is Biden trying to get Donald Trump, you know, so, so he won't run against him or whatever is ridiculous. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, that's that's their thing that they'll cry about, you know. That's his. Uh, that's his deal that he'll play over and over and over again. But I mean, it, they just have such a strong case, you know. I mean, if it were like you or I, I mean, we would have, you know, without we wouldn't have this ability to go out and you know work the media and all that. I mean, is he going to be able to plea bargain? Uh, well, I'm sure if he can, if he wants, you know, I'm sure they would take it. Oh, he's he's not circuit. he's not going to admit he's guilty. No, I don't think he no, would. he's not going to admit his guilt. Right? Yeah, I, I don't he think he would do that. But I mean, you know, someone like you and I, I mean, we'd probably be forced to because the case is well is to begin with. Good. I think if you look back at you know some of the cases of people who have done this, you know, like the Snowdens and others, you know, the public perception of it is. And, and, you know, I know he fled, but a couple of the people that have been caught, you know, that, that went to trial, I, I don't think anyone ever was found innocent, I, I you know, that I know of. I mean, I think that that, that woman, uh, that reality winner, her name, you know, was found guilty. And, uh, you know, there were a few others. I mean, you know, this kid that leaked all these documents from the, the air base or yeah, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you all know. I mean, he's going to have his trial, but I mean, does anyone think he's going to walk away? No, no, you know, no, not he'll be locked up no. forever. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he's he's going to jail, right? I mean, but well, you know, Drudge holds these uh, these straw polls, which are ridiculous because they're, they're you know, it, if people want a certain way to win, they can just over and over vote again and again and again and again. 
and they said, do you think uh, uh, Trump should wind up in prison? And the no's were about 63%, and the yeses were in the 30s. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I stopped to think there for a moment, and I went, you know, how can you even vote, have a vote on something like that? I mean, do you think, would you, do you think he should go to jail if found guilty? Yes. Absolutely. Well, yes. I would say he has too. Right. They say, well, that wouldn't be good for the country. What do you mean it wouldn't be good <laughs> for mean, the country? Wouldn't then how do you put, then, then how do you put the next person in jail for it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, because there will be a next person. I mean, if, if he isn't guilty, and doesn't go to jail, then this then this guy from the airbase, if we find him guilty, then what do we do when the trial's over? We just say, well, you, you know, thanks for your time. <laughs> well, you have to remember what, what Nixon did. He, he quit. He, well, he just said, I quit. I'm sorry. I didn't do it. I didn't do any of those. So I'm just not going to be president anymore. Well, he can't do that, though, because he's not president anymore. But he could. Well, I, I know, but he, he can he, do something. Oh, like he that. could like not run. That's one thing. That would yeah. be a good thing. They could also order him as part of the. Uh, I think, as part because it's a federal judge. I think that if they find him guilty and say, in exchange for jail, you uh, promise that you won't run for president. Mm. Yeah, that's too light. That's <laughs> too light. I agree, I but at least it saves the country. Well, no, I, I, quite frankly, I'd like to see him run. Really? Yeah, sure. Why yeah. not? I mean, Biden going out against a a guy who's been indicted on conspiracy charges uh, for uh, what 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 uh, what is it called? Uh, yeah, um, obstruction of justice, uh, obstruction and false statements, and. Yeah. You know, withholding evidence. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, that's not the official term there, but I mean. And he lied all about it. Yeah. Yeah. Liar. Well, there's nothing illegal about lying in general. Uh, if you lie to the FBI or you lie to the in yeah. court or something like that, there's a problem. But just lying to lie like he does. No, he lied to the F FBI. He lied to the FBI. Right. Right. That, yeah. Yeah. That's right. And not just about because he felt about what shoes he had on today. He did it because he had the, the secret information. Yeah. And who the heck he was going to do with it. Yeah. So anyway, I was watching Fox today. Because I always like to go over to Fox because it's kind of like, it's like going to another planet. You know, it's like bizarro world. Up is down, down is up, you know. And I wanted to see what they were doing. Well, to begin with, in the early part of the day, they were actually pillaring Trump. They were not saying nice things about Trump. They were not candy coating the situation, okay, which surprised me because you know how they are. But then as you got later on in the day, what did they switch to? Well, you know, Joe Biden, uh, they're looking into Joe Biden when he was uh, vice president and, <laughs> and when he wasn't vice president, taking money from uh, Burisma in uh, the Ukraine. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, all of a sudden they're doing that in order to, to, to not have to talk about the fact that Donald Trump was in indicted. You know, and this, these are some pretty serious charges. Very. What's the serious. what's what's the worst charge here? It's like uh, I'm trying to remember what it is. It's um, espionage. Espionage. <laughs> that's the word I was looking for. That's a pretty you know heavy thing to be accused of. Yeah. You know how many people during World War II were found guilty of espionage? They Not, were shot and killed. Well, they were shot, but how many were actually? even charged with it. I mean, that's a charge that you got to be pretty bad in order to get that, you know? I, I would be for, uh, if Trump gets convicted, if he chose the firing squad, I would I would shoot a rifle. Yeah, yeah, well, I, you know, I mean... What's I'm not into killing people, but some, he's not really human. Some guy on Fox today was saying, well, you know, the Democrats want him to die in prison. Well, I don't wish him death. I don't wish him. I, don't I want him to live as long as possible in prison. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not. I don't. I mean, that's a. 
And what's, yeah, what's, yeah, what's it, more of their hyperbole. I mean, I think we don't feel that way. I mean, we, you know what I've said privately about this. I mean, look, he he's did this to himself. I mean, you know, he's yes. he's yeah. he has he's nobody to, garbage as a person. I he, mean, you he know, has nobody to blame but himself. Yeah, That's I mean, right. he's 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 not a good person, and, <laughs> and you know, comparing comparing him to someone else is. It doesn't matter because we're not talking about that. We're talking about... Well, it about, was like Phil yeah. last night. By the way, Phil was wrong last mm. night. I should bring this up. Uh, I, I, Phil last night went into this whole thing about, well, what about uh, um, uh, Hillary Clinton and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, mm. you don't even bring that up because that doesn't... Just because, you know, you, you brought it up last night, just because they stop you for a ticket for speeding yeah. and there's and you can't go, well, the guy in front of me was going faster. And they said, yeah, but yeah, we didn't I mean, catch it, him. It, you know. it doesn't matter, right? That's what I'm saying. You know, I, you ran a red light. Well, I, I drive this route every day, and, and I see cars run that light all the time. Well, fine. You're the one that got okay. caught. You know. But anyway, you, anyway. You know, so, you know it's, it's not. So what Phil you know, said last night was when I when I mentioned that they were going to hold this thing in uh, in Dade County in, in Florida, he said, well, you know, Dade County is is traditionally a democratic stronghold yeah. no it's not it is a redder than red yeah it, absolutely it, i heard somebody say today it's redder than red it used to be democratic yeah but now it's red very red right yeah i mean i didn't know specifically but i i know that it shifted a lot down there even since you know, like I lived in Florida in 2001 for a while, and it's dramatically different than it, it is, you know, I mean, than it mm -hmm. is now. You know, just in the 20 years, it's it's completely transformed itself with people moving in, people moving out, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So, I mean, it doesn't matter where you have it. I mean, if he, if he has a trial and he's found guilty, look, it was fair because all it takes is one person. You know, I mean, it has to be unanimous. You know what I'm saying? All it takes is one person. So, I mean, if he goes through a trial... No, I don't think it has to be unanimous, does it? No. And you can't even get one person. I mean... It, but, yeah, it, Josh is right. It has to be unanimous. Yeah, you get one so, person that says no, and it's right. a... Hung, I think that's crime. only in capital crimes. I don't think that's... In some cases, uh, you can you just have a, have to have a majority verdict, you know? I mean, if they if, if they if they if they down there have to get a unanimous verdict, I don't know if they're going to get it. Okay. Um, but you never know. I mean, they you know that's I, why my they have other thought is that he figures he would do this one in Florida. Just say, see how magnanimous we are. We don't want to mm -hmm. we don't want to put the fix in or make it look like the fix is in. And All I don't right. know if you heard that Smith today talk to the press, but he basically he yeah, said yeah. you know. He gave. Mm -hmm. He just stated everything very nicely, and he said, "We we're doing this because nobody should be allowed to get away with this, you know." And yeah. but the thing I thought about was the reason he's doing it in Florida is he's saving the big gun for the January sixth trial, which is that's the next indictment that's going to have to come along, and that will be in Washington D.C. Yeah. So that's you know. Hmm? It's going to be harder to prove that. That's why they took this one first. No, I think the I think this one is in many ways harder to prove because he, he, he's, he's going to take he's going to take the dog ate my homework hmm. uh, uh, defense, uh, and some people in a jury might buy that. Oh, hey, I didn't know what I was doing. Well, they've got proof he knew what he was doing. He said he knew what he was doing. Yes, you know, so it's. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, hmm? he's just he's in big trouble. I mean, I you know, I don't know what to say. I mean, it it's just it's it's what he did to himself, and it's just the way that it's going to be. I mean, it's he doesn't really have a way out of it. I mean, you know, the problem that he really has is is he just has so much more that's still coming. I mean, hmm. you know, he has to face that trial in New York. I mean, he's been indicted. He's not going to plead, you know, so there has to be a trial, you know. Yeah, I mean, but that's a civil suit. You know. That's a civil suit. Well, the the, yeah. the criminal trial that he has in, in, is that, in New is York. Is that a criminal trial? Yeah. Oh, I thought that was a civil suit. No, that, I mean, he was charged with falsifying business records. I mean. Felonies. 
you know, yeah, right. Okay. I mean, he's been indicted now for felony crimes on multiple occasions. So, and then, uh, yeah. then, then also, he's got the January sixth thing. And there's one other that I'm trying to remember now that he's got going too. Oh, the Georgia. Yeah. The thing is supposed well, to right. Go. That's what I'm saying. Is he has, he has a lot more coming. I mean, it's going to be. Where's he going to get off? And I don't, I don't see how he gets through all of that without being found guilty of some stuff somewhere. Where's I mean, he, where's he's he not going to plead. Where's he? Gonna, I don't. Yeah, where's he going to get all the money to defend himself? That's the problem. No idea. You know, no. I mean, I don't know. I don't, you know, because I don't really know how much financial ability he really has. I would bet you he is close to broke. Yeah, I think we all know that's, you know, a bunch of garbage for people that think he's really wealthy. That nobody really knows where he is financially. Right. Because you could imagine that somebody knows that. Well, you know, you've got Mar-a-Lago and that is an asset. Okay, pretty expensive asset. But that's that not a, billions a of dollars. Place, right? Huh? That was a Russian place that he bought. Was it Russian? I think so. You know. But it, it you know, I mean, he, he, he doesn't have the money. He's sending out, uh, 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 Phil sent me a thing he got from Trump saying, send me money, I need money, take care of myself, wee, wee, hmm. wee, you know. I might have to raise his prices uh, for a room in this five diamond hotel in Las Vegas, Trump Tower or whatever it's called. Yeah, well, you know, all those things with, with Trump's name on it, he doesn't own. No, you know. probably not. He sold the hotel in Washington. I had reservations four years ago in the Bellagio, and the, the room they had set for me got flooded the night before, and so they were willing to move me to Trump Tower, and I said, nah. I'll go somewhere else. Is there a Trump yeah. Tower in Vegas? I don't think so. There's a Trump Hotel in Vegas. Is there on a the Trump strip. Hotel? I don't know if and, it's and, called and, Trump Tower, Tower, but it... Well, I don't know if it's called Trump anything anymore. I'll tell you, I had... Uh, we have two friends who uh, lived in a Trump building here in New York. Right. And uh, they all, you know, went out and did whatever they had to do and got Trump taken off of the building. Trump's name taken off of the building. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Most of, because well, they felt number one, it made them a target. Number two, if they ever wanted to sell their apartment, which was a condo, it lowered the property value. Wow. You know, and uh, all these other places that have Trump's name on it, for the most part, are except for Trump Tower, uh, are just he sells the name. That's yeah. what he, that's what he did for a living. He would sell his name. Hey, you can put Trump this or Trump that on your building, and you know whatever. So, Trump had that uh, golf place uh, in Queens. In Queens? Yeah, it's a golf. Well, I don't think he has it anymore. I don't think so. He has a place out in New Jersey, you know, and apparently I think he owns that. But you know who knows. And who knows how much in debt some of these places are because his name is on them. Yeah, that's true. Trump International Hotel in Las Vegas. Uh, uh, midweek right now, you can get a room for $157. It's a five-diamond hotel. Hmm. $157. It's a five-diamond hotel? It is. I've never heard of five diamonds. Five-star five hotel, five sorry. Star, five diamond. Well, isn't that how AAA rates things in diamonds? No. Never heard of it. Okay, I think that's a five a five star hotel. Sorry. Mm. So. Yeah, I imagine it's a pretty nice hotel. I mean, but uh, does he own it? Is the question. Yeah, I don't know. His the the, the corporation does. Um, there's Trump Las Vegas, Trump Chicago, Trump Dorel Miami, Trump Central Park, and Trump Waikiki. That's in the United States. Mm. Yeah, the Doral was his is basically his his um, golf. Um, sure. You know, golf. What's the word? I can't think of words tonight. Uh, his mm. golf club down in uh, down in down there in Florida, in the Florida area, and um, but there but it was it was some problem with it. It was losing money, I think, because he was trying to attract people to start playing their tournaments there, 
and they well, they wanted I mean, nothing to do with him. Well, the the PGA Tour went to Doral for decades, every year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it had a major tournament. As a matter of fact, when they created World Golf Championship events, it had a World Golf Championship event, which was a premier tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, that you know, the World Golf Championships usually only took the top fifty or sixty players in the world, and they had huge purses, so they were they were mega events and after he took over Doral, he had some of the golf course redone and the players hated it and the PGA Tour hated it. And then he was already on the fritz with them and then he started running his mouth when he became president and was running and the PGA Tour said, we don't want anything to do with this. Uh, That must have been back when they had scruples. (laughs) Yes, things have changed, haven't they? (laughs) You know, um, well, two so, years two anyway, years ago, they were they, yelling they at people away. like Phil Mickelson for playing in the Saudi, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, ter- uh, tournaments, right. and and now they're of course, you know, yeah. So I mean, you know, but back then they said, you know, we don't want anything to do with it, and they they took that tournament away from Doral, and you know, a golf tournament for a premier golf course is something that makes it what it is. I mean, it's. It's on TV once a year, and it, it gets otherwise money. it's yeah. just another golf course. Yeah, in a lot of ways it is. I mean, you know, and and it was sad when they went away from Doral. I mean, I used to love that tournament, watch it every, you know. But they, he, he basically he ruined it, you know, which is neither here or, or there politically. I mean, you know, it, I mean, it, but it was just it was just sad, you know, what happened. But you know, mm-hmm. the tour they took it away and. Uh, he he also he bought a golf course in in Scotland or whatever. Yeah, it was part of the rotation for the the Open Championship, which is you know one of the four major championships for golf. And they took it out of the rotation. They won't go there either. Wow. And that 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 hurt that golf course tremendously. Um, and he's still crying about that. There was a headline. You know he can't cry about, about any of this because he's about. the master of his own demise. Well, you're right. I mean, you yeah. know and. I mean, I I remember even before he ran for president, because I was working in the golf industry, reading an article in a golf magazine from like 2013 or 2014 of about a golf club somewhere that he bought. Uh, and obviously these are really premier clubs. And just reading an article about how as soon as he bought it, the membership like a bunch of people resigned immediately because they know that every club he's ever bought he's ruined, which is true. He has owned a lot of golf courses throughout the years and people in the industry have always known that he comes in and he buys them. He does all kinds of stuff for six or seven years and he doesn't pay anybody and he ruins it and then he sells it and he gets out. And that's... that's He's, you know, a, he's known pretty money. much as being a stiff, isn't he? For, for stiffing oh, people. Man. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, why, that's yeah. why he's down to... Th- no lawyers right now because he doesn't pay him right yeah absolutely man nobody wants to defend him everybody that defends him gets in trouble or doesn't get paid or something well he keeps coming up with these new lawyers nobody ever heard of yep you know who was where's this guy gone that looked like he was a mobster do you know the one i'm talking Uh, about yeah i think maybe he's the one he's keeping that's going to help him with this case maybe i heard he was keeping one of his lawyers the one that had helped him in new york uh and i think all the rest left and he was making it sound like um he fired them you know yeah like he got rid of them or whatever but i'm sure that they were like <laughs> you know i mean uh, there's got to be an old lady that slipped on a sidewalk well you send the guy a bill and he doesn't pay it for a while you got to <laughs> say hey i think i better cut bait right now you know yep. I mean, uh, it's 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 amazing, you know, what this guy's gotten away with. And everybody, a lot of people have stated that really he is just, it's just everything's coming to finally haunt him, you know, yeah. all these years of what he's done. You know, he's always been a crook. You know, yep. he was a crook yeah. here in New York. And that's what I kept saying to Phil and Phil, oh, no, he's an honest guy. He's really... And last night, I think I I noted that Phil wasn't about ready to say that he was on Trump's side anymore. You know? He almost said it. Huh? He almost did. He almost said it. That he was still on his side or against? No, he was kind of trying to be. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, look, you know, it's just, I mean, well, if it's any, the same if it, kind of documents yeah. that, you know, like I said, other people took, you know, I mean, I know he didn't leak them, so that's different, but I mean, you know, it's just, <laughs> something like that is pretty clear. Yeah. I mean, you know, the case in New York or whatever, I'm sure you can argue back and forth about, and I mean, you can argue any case, right? And the lawyers will do it, but I'm just saying it's just not... I don't, I mean, I've seen four or five pretty big time lawyers, I guess, on TV in the last, you know, day or so asked, you know, what defense do you scheme up for this, you know, and they all just kind of mumble around like I just did for a second, and they don't really have anything, you know. <laughs> one, of, one of Trump's lawyers you know, two days ago on Fox News said, and threw Trump under the bus, that is not the type of lawyer I'd want, but said, we're going to try and prove that he's not guilty. Yeah. Exact words. We're gonna we're gonna try uh, and prove he's and, not guilty. Yeah, try and tr prove that he's not guilty. To begin with, the Everybody job assumes he's guilty. Yeah, but the job yeah. of uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the job of a lawyer is not to have to prove your your client uh, uh, innocent. You you the, the, it's the job of the government to prove him guilty. You right. Know. That he's he he yeah. says, I'm words, assuming he says I'm assuming everybody assumes he's guilty, so I'm going to try and prove that he's not. Well, guilty. no, I mean I uh, listen right now. I don't give him the presumption of of guilt. I I you know I give him the presumption of innocence as I should as a good American, and you know I but I between you and me, I think this guy's been getting away with murder for years. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then we vote, made him president of the United States, which was insane. You know, I'm saying this to all the people out there who are Trump acolytes. Come on. Time to give up the ghost, okay? This guy yeah. was a, has always been a crook, okay? He's had a mob mentality. This thing right now is playing itself out like a mob movie. You know, the things he's saying is like out of a mob movie. I mean, he's he's a mobster. Yeah, he thinks he's Lucchese, you know, or some big mobster. Yeah, yeah. He's got a fantasy in his head, who knows? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is not about, it's not about his politics. I mean, you know, we've been over this before. I mean, you what, know. What politics? Well, exactly. But I mean, it's not about, you know, Democratic policies or Republican policies. Or whatever. I mean, it's about his actions, and you know, his actions here were illegal. The one you know? I love when you ask people, when you ask these, you know, these MAGA people, well, what is it you like about Trump? And he says, well, I like the fact that he built that wall along the border, and he 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 put a kibosh on immigration into this country over the border. Do yeah, you know right. the title? What was it? Title Forty Two. That was the thing that was preventing people from coming in here from Mexico that Trump thought up because it was to protect us from COVID. You right. remember that? Yep. Well, uh, Title 42 expired. I think I have the name of it right. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Title 42 expired. And what do you think happened? The amount of immigration has gone down by 80%. Yeah. 80% less people are trying to get in this country from Mexico now than when Title 42 was in existence. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you think he had anything to do with stopping immigration into this country, he enhanced it with Title 42. I don't know. You know, all the news I see of uh, El Paso, Texas. Doesn't matter. A lot, sat, a lot of the Mexicans and others sat on the other side until Title 42 was was done. It has then, not increased. It has gone down by 80%. Okay, that's not the news I saw. So. Well, that's the news I, I saw. Okay, I, I don't want to argue. I just want to... It I was just, on, the, on, NBC news, news. on NBC News the other night. I don't but, think Title 42 stopped anything. Title 42, yeah. What? Title 42. I don't think Title 42 stopped immigrants from coming in here. Hmm. They still came in. No, but what I'm saying is, with it in place, somehow, for some reason, there was there were you know 80 percent more people trying to get themselves into this country. The minute minute it went away, 
It, well, they, they handed lowered. them ballots and said vote Republican or something. No, I but no, but no, but the point is that what happened was is that you could say that under Trump, more people were trying to get in than are trying to get in now with no Title Forty Two in existence. Okay. You know, so whose fault was it? It was Trump's fault. You know. Uh, well, I, yeah, I mean, immigration did increase under him a great deal. I, I believe of the last one, two, four or five presidents, the lowest amount of immigration uh, on record was under President Obama, you know, um, and, and it greatly increased after Obama left mm -hmm. and Trump took over. Now, I, I don't know the numbers or whatever, you know, X number of million or whatever it was, but... There was a huge increase after Obama left and Trump took over in immigration into inter illegal border crossings. I mean, I, I, they were at a record low under the Obama administration, you know, because they had some sensible policies and, you know, uh, proper security. Um, but there were still issues down there, even then, just like there is now, because we have laws that make the issues, you know, that no president yet has fixed. I mean, so... Well, there's always been an issue down on that border. I mean, you don't see people flowing in over the Canadian border, do you? Right. You know, because right. nobody nobody necessarily wants to leave Canada. But those people do want right. to leave where they've been because of the gangs and because of the crime and because of a lot of other things. And they're willing to they're willing to risk their lives to come here, Ooh, you know. And you got to have some kind of respect for that. Yes. So, so I, I think you're right, and I was wrong. Um, I just read what uh, Title Forty Two was. So when it was going, when Title Forty Two was going on, we had more illegal crossings. Now what we have is more people crossing, but they're crossing to become legal. They're not crossing to be illegal. They're getting because they know under Title 42 they'd be get, they'd get shipped right back if they got caught. So now they're coming in the legal way, getting documented and trying to become U.S. citizens. Okay, so wasn't that the answer in the first place? Yes, yes. Yeah, you know. No, I, I said you're right, yeah, but, I'm wrong. But I'm saying this to any of those people who are like Trump fans. You know, this guy was a terrible president. I mean, this guy, this, he reminds me when he's standing up there of Mussolini. You know, he's got Hitler. that Mussolini Hitler. face. No, Mussolini. Hitler. Look at Mussolini. Really? Look at Trump. And basically, you st both both of them are the same fat fuck. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And 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 by the way, Mussolini had that arrogant, you know, kind of thing that Trump uh, has. So. I I think it's funny when Trump gets pissed. Yeah. Makes, yeah. I, I can't even make the face, but. Yeah. But, it's kind uh, of like the, 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 the look Phil has when he's constipated. I mean, he's going to have, you know, he'll have his trials, uh, I suppose. And I did look and verify for you that in both the state and federal levels for criminal trials, the verdicts do have to be unanimous. Do, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I thought so. There were some states that did not require unanimous verdicts, and a 2020 Supreme Court ruling overturned those and made every state have to go But if it's not unanimous, unanimous if it's not unanimous, it's a, it's a hung jury. It's a hung jury, and they can retry. Okay. Yep. All right. You're, not, you're not, not guilty. Your trial is basically just... Like it never happened. Invalid. If there's, and, you know, and Jeopardy, our government has Jeopardy's a lot of money to right. retry him. Oh, they can, they can retry him until he has no money left. Yep. You know, I, I know what you, I know what I know what you're saying, mega people. You're saying, well, he's got lots of money. He's a billionaire. No, he's not. No, he's not. That's the biggest lie. Why would he be asking for money? A billionaire. Yeah, why would he be asking for your money? Listen, he got himself into this trouble. Let him get himself out of it. Okay. There, there may be uh, before this goes to trial. There may be a a, a plea bargain. I don't. Th you think he's going to even I, allow himself? I to don't plea know. Bargain? He doesn't have the money to hire a good lawyer, so he sees himself going to prison. I, I mean, I. Yes. My, no, my, so? my question is number one. Uh, on Wednesday, on Tuesday, when he goes three o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time to court to show yeah. up for his indictment, mm -hmm. uh, is he going to be handcuffed? I doubt, it. And I the, doubt it. The, Well, it's a federal charge. This is a heavy federal yeah. charge. Okay. I don't. I, and you know. is he going to have to pay bail? I don't, I don't know. know. Probably not. 
Does he, now, it, bail, it, bail a lot of times is based on flight risk. It, yeah. Well, is he a flight risk? Well, they're gonna, they'll make him turn over his passport. I'm sure of that. And they may, they may or may not have bail for him, but he can pay the bail, but uh, they got to make it reasonable. You know, so he's well, not. Oh, they don't make it reasonable for a lot of other people. They use it almost as a penalty. Absolutely. You know, especially if you're a minority. If I got charged with all this stuff, what do you think my bail would be? I'd be pretty hefty. It'd be, yeah, it'd be really hefty. <laughs> Upwards in in the million dollar range, maybe. Yeah. Uh, did they? So the kid that got arrested. Is he out of bail or is he being held? I, you know, I think he's being I didn't held. Really, you know, remember. He's the flight risk, is what they said. I think he's being and held. What's his name? He brought up what's his name? The guy that fled to Russia. Um, Mel Snowden. He ran. Snowden. You know? Yeah, but you know, was Snow were Snowden's crimes as heinous as this? Uh, I, you know, I don't. I, as heinous as heinous as the kid. I mean, he leaked a lot of stuff. So I mean, you know, Trump at least didn't leak his to the public public i mean i know he was showing them off to people you know walking by My question but the question still has to be asked posters and whatnot what what was he doing holding on to all those papers i mean that's the true question right i mean that's the that's the real question if you ask me is that's what i'm saying is what good do they do you anymore that you're not well, President, let's say, what do you, okay, no, what do you want okay, them okay, say you're good friends with Pooty Poot, okay? Oh, right. Right? Didn't he call him Pooty Poot? Wasn't that one of his nicknames for him? Uh, uh, but, but Putin. Uh, and uh, let's say uh, he wants to get him really good with Putin. Hey, Putin, you want to see how we're going to defend ourselves if you attack us? Here, I'll send it to you. I'll fax it to you. Uh, I don't think he the- did it. That's the problem with this. That might be what he was going to do with it. No, I'm saying that what he saw was value in these documents to be able to sell them on some level, whether it was for a book or whether it was for, uh, hey, uh, listen, I would like a better deal from the Saudis for, you know, a a golf link over there. You know, that's that's possible. That's what espionage is. Well, I mean, what do you? What else? Look, you're okay. You're present. You've got all these documents, okay? Mm. What are you going to do with them if if not try and sell them to somebody if you're if you're nefarious? I mean, I don't think that Biden, when he, that stuff was found in his home, that was just a mistake, you know? I mean, I'm sure they shipped some documents to his house when they were sending all the, all the furniture from the White House and so on. And uh, it wound up in his garage. Okay, so when they said, "Hey, look, we just saw you had some in your garage." Okay, come and take them. Come on, you know there was yep. never any resistance on that, and nope. and it wasn't that Biden did it anything. It was anything but a mistake on Biden's part. Mm-hmm. Now you could argue that hey, at at Mar-a-Lago, some of these documents got there because when they moved the furniture, some of this stuff got moved with it. People mistakenly, but you there was so much of it. That that can't be the case. Well, but okay. but what you know what wipes all that out is the fact that if that were the case, they simply just give them back, right? You know, I mean, hey, I you I'm know sorry, I took looked in my suitcase the for the first time since I wasn't present anymore the other day, and here was this file, right? But also, they have him you know, on uh, uh, one of the things they supposedly have on him is that when they wanted those papers, when they wanted those those things to be given to them. He hid them. So when they came to get That's them, one, they yeah. couldn't find them. And in uh, one yeah. case, they flooded the swimming pool, so it leaked into the basement, and some of those documents got drenched. Yeah, I mean, the indictment, you know, says pretty much that he conspired to move them around so that they couldn't find them. Uh, yeah. I just, right before I you came on, read a paragraph doc- where... One of his old lawyers apparently testified to them that he asked him to maybe take the box back to his hotel with him that night. Uh, and the, the bar locker was going to get searched the next day. You know, I mean, he literally, yeah. I guess, asked the guy to take the box with him he, to his hotel. He buried his he wife on the bar lago property, his, ex, his former wife. I wonder how many documents are in that. In what? In, in the coffin. She oh. may not even be in the coffin. He may have said we don't have room for her. Just put the. Doctor no, he wants to have access to them, so yeah. you know. 
But, I mean, the puzzling thing to me the whole time has been, I, I mean, unless it's, unless it really is just pure ego, I mean, why do you, what good do they do you anymore? You know, I mean, they're, they're not needed for, you know, memoirs or the things that presidents, you know what I mean? What do you need the original copies of document i mean these you know i i don't i don't know i don't know what good they are to you i mean the only reason that people ever really take these i guess there's two reasons one of them is to leak them because they want to leak them for a purpose of you know a political purpose or a purpose of an injustice and the other reason they take them is to sell them to somebody and make money that's the only two reasons that i really think of that people usually ever take classified documents I mean, oh, Pooty Poo. Uh, oh, by the way, Vernon Nunn wrote uh, Pooty Poo. Pooty Poot was uh, the nickname George W. Bush had for Putin. I think so, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So so Putin said after Trump was out, they said the, the news, one of the news services interviewed Putin and said, you and you and Trump are friends. He says, we're not friends. I, well, while he was president, I used him like I would use any president. Now that he's out of office, he's nothing to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Putin was, Putin's not stupid. You know, he no. knows he, he he knows how to use presidents or or whoever. You know, if they if they're if they're dumb enough to let him use them, like Trump was. So. John Redshaw writes me. No one's talking about Nada, the, the guy that uh, you know was his assistant, uh, yeah, Navy totally. Navy veteran or something like that. And uh, yeah, well, he was indicted as a, a co-conspirator. Conspirator, yeah, know, but they say they say or, that if he decides to flip on uh, on uh, uh, Trump, um, Trump's goose is cooked. You know. Well, they probably got him in uh, protective custody then. Something like that, and now we got oh, guys. Yeah. We have Republicans in Congress, kind of saying incendiary things that would make people want to like make trouble, like January sixth. You know, yeah. yeah. One of them wrote an eye for an eye. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's, it, it's terrible. It's really terrible. You know, uh, the way this is being handled and reacted to. I mean, the Republicans, uh, his, uh, his, uh, what he calls his, his rivals on the campaign trail, um, are saying, "Oh, this is terrible what they're doing to him. This is, you know." I, the term they all used, which means that somebody there who told them, okay, this is the term to use today to describe this. They all called it the weaponization of the Justice Department. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, yeah, it's a weaponization. Well, they've got a whole uh, committee you know, investigating sure. that that hasn't come up with anything. Yeah, else. weaponization, give me a break. You know, no, it's, use, it, it's the Justice Department doing their job. You know, and I'm, you know, if he can't, if he can't be indicted, then I can't be indicted and <clears throat> none of us can be indicted for stuff. So let's try and get away with murder. You know, you doing okay there, Jeff? You look like you were dozing oh, yeah. off a little, you know, Stay away. but it looks like looking at your face, you got a lot of sun. Well, it's you got rosacea. I've been putting some, uh, no, that's not rosacea. That's on, burn. Yeah. on my skin. Rosacea usually gets this part. I have, I have it up here. <clears throat> oh, you do? Why? Well, I have it here. But you know what? It, what this is though, I like it gets red up here. Uh, yeah. I was told by my doctor. You know how you think what you do to get rid of it? Uh, put dandruff shampoo on it. No, yeah. because it no. There's a prescription for it. Uh, I've tried that. That that it, almost, it, it sort of works. For sort me. of works. But what he said is, is that what it really is is a form of dandruff. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. And that you can get it to go away by, it can help go away by using dandruff shampoo. Put it on there for about five minutes. And well, uh, th this lotion is, uh, have you heard of the antibiotic flagell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what this lotion is. This is, this is flagell in a cream. Yeah. Mm. And so, because they think it's, they think it's related to bacteria. And I, I guess dandruff is a bacteria too. I think it's a great way to end the show tonight, talking about scaling skin. Thank you. you know. Well, we could talk about how much I'm gonna miss 
Pat Robertson. Uh, Pat Robertson, uh, my uh, friend. Mm -hmm. I will see you one day. No, never mind. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can hear this, but. A lot of people say, "What's that? It's Pat. Here comes Pat." And we used. We used to run that on the show and then play a clip of, of yeah. Pat Robertson that day. We used to do that Series XM. I remember. And I got to tell you, uh, he was hilarious. Yeah. He could get hilarious. Yes, yeah. uh, Jeff. Well, I listened to the show from, uh, from Richard uh, the other day for that hour and a half. That's about it. Well, it was it? very well done. Oh, you mean the, you mean the uh, Sheck Fest? Yeah, from Sheck. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, a it, lot of those people I don't know. But You didn't have but, to. You didn't have to. No, they, I know. I really like to listen to it. it was, the whole thing anyway. was very entertaining. And if yes. anybody hasn't seen it, I have it. Uh, uh, it's on YouTube. You can actually type in yeah. Sheck Fest and it will show up on YouTube. And it's about an hour and 50 minutes, and you say, oh, well, that's awfully long, isn't it? And I gotta tell you, it's thoroughly entertaining from beginning to end. It's a lot of people. A lot of people, a lot yeah. of people. And then, and, I had I to, to, and then I had to follow Letterman. Yeah. <laughs> and you did a great job. Yeah. It was uh, terrific. But uh, I always get stuff from Checky. He would send little emails for me, because I was always interested in old stuff that happened in the 30s yeah in the 40s in new york and he would always come up with something and send it to to me maybe he send it to a lot of other people but i always said thanks to him and well what i, I wish you were here right sure. now because the last couple of days i've been spending my time watching the works of clara bow now i don't know if anybody knows who clara bow was but i, I think if you name. had to say that there was ever a a woman who was a sex symbol in movies. Mm -hmm. She was the best. She mm -hmm. was hot. And she mm -hmm. was funny. And she was really a great performer. And I, I wish he were here so I could just say to him, hey, Shecky, I've been watching all this stuff on Clara Bow. And I said, hey, you know, and I, I just love her, you know. And he'd probably agree with me on Clara mm -hmm. Bow. I mean, but you know, I, it's one of the times where I say to myself, "Oh, gee, I wish I could be, uh, um, you know, talking about Clara Bow with him." So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to play the theme here. Gee, you know, all the only people that called tonight were you guys. I don't know where anybody else was. I know Vernon Nunn was out there, but he never called. Uh, and uh, you know, so but but it's fine. It was a nice conversation with some very intelligent people. And that's as it should be. Yes. Because I because I missed an opportunity to send you something. Amazon says it'll arrive Monday. Monday. What are, What are you sending me? Something nice. Something nice. Okay. Because every now and then I get these mysterious packages from Amazon. And I say I didn't order anything. You know. Nah, I'll always tell you if I'm going to send you something. Yeah. Well, no, it's nice. Thank you. Whatever it is. You know, okay. Is you'll, it, you'll, you'll see it Monday. Is it a huge amount of cash? Maybe, but that would be, that'd be very nice. Oh, <laughs> well, God, I didn't think about that. That was. Uh, hey. Next yeah, time. Well, I don't care if nobody else called. To the ones who didn't call, eh. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they can demonetize me for that because that's just my. My, my, I'm scratching. That's right, you were just here. scratching. You were just scratching. Yeah. Anyway, hey, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. Thanks, Josh. Oh. And thanks, uh, Alan. I appreciate your being here and uh, everybody give a big wave goodbye and i'll give a big wave goodbye at you okay there they go ladies and gentlemen that's our citizen panel for the night that's our citizen panel for this week i'll be back again on monday uh with the pop-up program it'll show up on uh, on uh, uh facebook who i'm having trouble just posting these shows on facebook so you know i'm i still gotta solve that problem anyway uh, we'll see you there uh, at 4 o'clock. And then uh, on Wednesday at uh, 10.30, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. He'll be taking calls on uh, uh, Skype at GabNet Live. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, yeah, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend. <laughs>